Hey, this is Tyler Thraxofish. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have another fish update. The first update we have is on the 30 gallon tank. The two flag cichlids we had put in here are doing amazing. One of them is a male and one's a female, so maybe in the future when I have more time we could try breeding them. The black skirt tetras we had put in here are doing great too, besides a few nips when we first put them in. I've been keeping an eye on them and it hasn't gotten any worse. They've been in the tank a few weeks now and doing pretty good. The next update is on the female beta tank. As you might know, a couple weeks ago I put 7 carnal tetras in here. After about two weeks time, she had enough of it and started chasing them around at night time, so I had to take them out. For the time being, I got them put in the 2.5. They've been in here about a week or so and been doing a lot better. Unfortunately though, we only have six because the beta killed one and then took out the eye of this guy here. I think this happened because they were all in a 5 gallon tank instead of a 10 or 20 where they'd have more room. When I first put the carnal tetras in here, I noticed the filter was going too fast and the knob's broken from dropping it. So I had an idea from someone else to cut out a cup and put little pieces to slow the flow down. This seemed to help a lot because immediately the carnal tetras came to the front of the tank. I'm sure other people have done this, but I specifically seen it from MD Fish Tanks here on YouTube. But you can see down here, look, some of the plants are getting a bit battered, so I've made this thing here. It's like I cut it out from a bottle, bended the plastic back at the top. It seems to be helping tremendously, and I think they'll do a lot better in here. The next update is on our male bed in Neptune. His fin rot still isn't looking very good, so I had a suggestion from one of you to try some alder cones and almond leaves. These will release natural tannins that are healthy for the fish. I just started by boiling them to help them sink. After I got them put in, I put a rock on top of some of the leaves to help them stay put. After a couple days, you can see the water's a lot darker from the tannins being released. I just really hope this helps. The next update we have is on the cuppy tank. They've been still going after each other since the mating that was going on in here, so I took the white and yellow one into my local fish store. And then the tiger antler got taken out and put in the 6 gal community curve tank. He's a pretty hardy fish, so I know he'll do good in here. The guppy tank's looking a little bare, but that's okay. You gotta do what's right for the fish's health. I thought that was all I had to report on this tank, but then the next day, this male guppy I noticed wasn't swimming right. I had never seen this before and I had no idea what was going on. From afar, he seemed really anxious, and then when he got up close, he was really scared. I ended up having my friend Tim and his girlfriend over, and it was at this moment he told me that these live bearer fish can actually permashock themselves. I did not know this, and it's really upsetting. I'll have to keep an eye on them. The next update after that is the baby guppies. Compared to how big they were when they were first born, they've grown a lot. They've been getting big enough where I don't feed them much of the newborn fish food anymore. But instead, I set up a brine shrimp hatchery and been feeding them baby brine shrimp. They need the extra protein at this age to grow properly and healthy. I'll be posting a full video on how I set up the brine shrimp hatchery, so stay tuned for that. And I also ordered this aquarium divider so within the next month we can get the males and females separated. I really appreciate all the support in the videos lately and that's going to wrap it up for now. Thanks so much for watching and catch you next week.